Hi everybody, welcome back to part 6 in this series about predetermined tracks. In parts 1, 2, 3, and 4, I showed the basic procedure for how to intercept a track, whether it be to an NDB or a VOR with any type of navigation display. And then in uh, part 5, I showed you specifically how to set up a Garmin GNS 430 to intercept a particular track. And now in part 6, I'm going to show you the exact same thing, but this time with the GTM 650. Now this video is aimed primarily at my students in the Selkirk College Aviation Program. We have uh, a mixed fleet. We have some Garmin 430s and some GTN 650s, so my students need to be familiar with both. If you're just a GTN 650 user, uh, then you, uh, you might want to skip part 5, but I am going to assume that that uh, you are familiar with the Garmin 430 in this video. We're using here a piece of software that you can download free of charge from the Garmin website and it's really great that Garmin does that for us. Um, so uh, if you're having any trouble finding this software on the Garmin website you can try looking at the Selkirk College Aviation Program homepage. The URL shown here and then on our homepage we have a link to the appropriate page on the Garmin website to download this software and install it on your computer. On the screen you can see the, the mouse moving around but remember in the real world this is a touchscreen navigator which means you tap on it with your finger so wherever you see the mouse that's your finger in the real world. Uh, so let's get started with uh, a comparison from uh, episode 5 in which uh, we're flying here just off the coast of Washington State. We've got uh, Bellingham Airport off here to the left. The Abbotsford uh, Airport is just a little bit off the screen here to the right. If I zoom out a little bit you can see the Abbotsford Airport right there. Um, we're out over the ocean and uh, the controller has asked us to turn around and come back to the White Rock Beacon on a track of 330. And here's White Rock behind us back here. So first of all, let me show you the, the least desirable way to do this. And uh, if you recall in episode 5, I, I said you could, do, you could hit the direct button with your Garmin 430 and you could hit the direct button here and I'll demonstrate that to you, but that's not what I would recommend. But that is what a lot of people do instinctively. You just hit the direct button. So I'll just show you how to do that. And it comes up, shows you your current waypoint. You want to change that, so you tap on it. Now here, you can just go through and put in WC, or you can hit the Find button. Uh, we have a few more options here than in the, uh, in the Garmin 430. Nearest is what we used in the Garmin 430 and that's what we'll use. But if you know you've used White Rock recently, which I know I have, I can go through and see there it is. White Rock's on my recent list. So if I just clicked it there, I'm good to go. But rather than do that, I'll show you how to do nearest. When you click on nearest, you get first the nearest airports. Then you have to come over here to filters and then scroll down and find NDB. So there's NDBs and now we finally got White Rock and we can put it in and set the course. Okay, and I'm actually going to cancel all that because I want to show you by comparison that was actually quite a lot of clicking you'll notice. It's much quicker to go through the home key. So don't hit your direct button. Come over here, hit your home. That brings you right up so there's nearest right away. See how much quicker we're at nearest? and see how much easier it is to find NDBs. And there's White Rock. So now click on White Rock. And here's the frequency, so you can get your ADF all tuned up. It's even telling us the distance away and the current bearing. Now hit your direct button. And White Rock is already set for you if you've got a specific course, 330, that the controller wants, you can put that in. And then go activate. And there you go. And even with me talking away while doing it, you can see that was pretty quick. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate that one more time. That's still not the quickest, by the way. The best is yet to come. That's only the second best, what you just saw. Uh, but I would point out that that's kind of the equivalent of doing it uh, the way we did with the Garmin 430. So let's say the controller wants us to go to Whatcom, which is over here to the left. And we're, we're diehard Garmin 430 guys. We're going to hit Home. We're going to hit Nearest. We're going to hit VORs, and there's Whatcom. So we'll bring that up. Notice that the frequency is here. 
And this is the same thing I showed you with the Garmin 430. Be sure you remember to click on that and see that tunes it for you. And it turns out I already had Watkin tuned, but if I didn't have Watkin tuned, tap that button before you hit the direct button. Put any course in here that has been assigned to you and activate it. And there we are heading over to the Watkin VR. Okay, so that was pretty uh, pretty easy for sure, and uh, fairly intuitive for anyone who's a Garmin 430 user. It's almost identical. It's just that uh, you remember with the Garmin 430, we had to do the three clicks to the right to get to the nearest page. Here, you just go home and nearest. It's at least as fast, probably in reality, faster to do that. Uh, but there is an even quicker method. So let's do a do over here. The controller wants us to go to White Rock on a track of 330. Well, I can see White Rock right here on my, on my map, and it is a touch screen, so just tap it. Now, in this particular case, notice that when I, I attempted to tap on White Rock, so I was hoping to see WC here, but I, I didn't get that. You can see that, that the screen is highlighting this entire airspace. Uh, so it's it's giving me some airspace information. Well, that's what the next button is for. You click the next button. Well, got some more airspace, some more airspace, some more airspace. Keep on going. And now we've got some information about Vancouver International, the city of Vancouver, and finally White Rock. Once you finally get White Rock up here, and you know in this particular example, maybe it's not impressing you with the speed, but you know in the real world. What you'll find happens is when you put your finger on the, the screen to try to get white rock, if you don't get it, just wiggle your finger a little bit and you'll get white rock. But if after two or three seconds of wiggling your finger you still don't have it, just let go and tap next a couple of times and you'll get what you're looking for real quick. Now hit direct, put your course in, and there you go. Okay, activate it, and there we are. So, uh, now let, let's do the example with Watcom again. So this time I tap on Watcom, and this time it came up Watcom right away. But do not hit direct immediately at this point, since this is a VOR and you want to tune it. Now in this particular case, we know that we actually already have Watcom tuned. But if you didn't have Watcom tuned, you would tap it here, brings you to the information page, tune it at that point, and then hit direct. Okay. Put your desired course in, and you're off. Okay, so I'll show you uh, that one more time. Let's say the controller wants us to go to the Vancouver VOR. Notice how with your finger you can just move the map around, just like on an iPad or an iPhone. You know, so I couldn't see Vancouver a moment ago, but I just move the map over so I can. And you can you can even zoom in if you think that's going to help you. Uh, and then click on your Vancouver VOR. See, so there's the Vancouver VOR. Now, because it's a VOR and I want to tune it, I'm going to click up here and tune it. See, so I've got it tuned. I activate it like that, and now I hit the direct button. Put in whatever course I've been asked to fly, and then activate it. Okay, and I need to zoom out a little bit so I can see where I'm going. Good airmanship here. So the course that, that I apparently have been asked to fly is back behind me, so I need to do a 180 and go back there. And that was all explained in parts 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, so it's just as simple as that. Let's say the controller asks you to, uh, to go over to some near nearby intersection. If you zoom your map in a bit, you see the intersection names start to, to pop up. If you've been asked to go over to Sit Sitog, just click on it and then go direct. If you want to go straight there, just go direct. We're on our way to Sitog right now. So it tells you to turn. If you'd want to go on a specific track, you would have put that in there. Activate that, and then we get that specific track. Um, remember, the exact same thing could have been done by going through home and nearest. Then we would pick intersections, and Sitog would probably have been on the list. There it is. Okay, and so we could have done it that way. Uh, but I think that's a bit slower than just tapping on it right on the screen. Okay, so I'll back out of this. And I think that's about it for this episode. Don't forget to set sensible scales. And uh, we'll see you next time.